How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Power Five here on Wager Talk TV. I am, of course, Brian Power, talking NFL Week 10. What red hot team will I be selling high on Sunday? Which struggling team will I be buying low on? Just how profitable have unders been this season? And which two teams have been ridiculously bad in the first halves of games this year? Answers to all those questions and more coming up shortly. But first, a reminder. You can save $50 off the cost of any 30-day all-access pass right now at wagertalk.com by using the coupon code ALL30. That's ALL30, A-L-L-3-0. It applies to any sports-specific package, an all-sports package, no limit how many times you can use it for all the different handicappers at wagertalk.com. Head on over right now. It's the weekend. Great time to take advantage. I'll have more on that in a bit. But first... Time to kick off the Power 5 the same way we always do, and that's by checking out the wagertalk.com live odds screen to see how the market is moving for NFL Week 10. And let's start over in Frankfurt, Germany. Colts at Patriots. This line's jumped the fence. Uh, doesn't seem too good in Foxborough these days, so maybe Bill Belichick and company are glad they're getting out of the country. They opened minus 1.5. But they're up to plus two now against the Indianapolis Colts, the only team in the league who has scored 20 or more points in every game. Uh, AFC North rivals as we move to the one o'clock window. Cleveland and Baltimore, they renew acquaintances. This is a rematch from a month ago, a game the Ravens dominated, but the Browns had Dorian Thompson-Robinson at quarterback. Sean Watson's back now. Uh, betters don't seem to care, though, because the Ravens, who are as hot as any team in the league, they're number one in my power ratings. They are out to minus six and a half at home against the Browns. That total down to 38. We're going to talk a lot about totals here in a moment. Uh, Houston and Cincinnati, two hot teams with two hot quarterbacks. I'm going to have more on this game as well later. Money's coming in on the Texans. That number down to six and a half, uh, despite Houston being on the road. The total up to 47, even 47 and a half in some places. Not a surprise given how well C.J. Stroud and Joe Burrow have played of late. One of the more intriguing games is San Francisco and Jacksonville. Uh, two teams off buys. 49ers were not playing well going into their buy. Jaguars were, but San Francisco's now laying a field goal on the road. Totals 45 Uh Money has come in a little bit on the 49ers and the over in that one. New Orleans and Minnesota. What a story Josh Dobbs was last week for the Vikings, everybody. Uh, leading the outright win against the Falcons. But his new team, the Vikings, continue to get very little respect. They are three-point underdogs at home to the Saints, who needed a plus-five turnover margin to get by the Bears at home last week. That number opened New Orleans minus two-and-a-half. Total open 38 and a half. It's now 41. Green Bay and Pittsburgh. Low total here, no surprise. Uh, but it is up a point from 38 to 39. The Steelers have taken money as well. They've gone from minus two and a half to minus three and a half. Tennessee and Tampa Bay, not much to talk about here. Totals up slightly from 38 and a half to 39. Point spread holding pretty steady at bucks minus one. Kyler Murray will be making his 2023 debut for the Arizona Cardinals, and betters don't seem to care because Atlanta opened minus one and a half. They're now minus two at Arizona. That total has gone from 41 to 43. By the way, all these numbers current as of Friday afternoon. Detroit, all the way out to minus three off a of bye at the Chargers, who are on a short week after an ugly win against the Jets on Monday night. Uh, look, I know the Chargers have been winning ugly against some bad teams. Not sure they should be getting a field goal at home, though, against the Lions. That total has held steady at 48.5. How about this number? Dallas Cowboys, minus 17.5 against the Giants. This is the biggest spread all year we've seen in the NFL, and that should not be a surprise. A couple weeks ago, when Tyrod Taylor was the quarterback, the Giants were plus 15.5 against the Bills on the road. The Cowboys and Bills, two Similarly power-rated teams, I think you would say. And now the Giants have Tommy DeVito, and as presently construed, the Giants are as bad as any team in the NFL. The Cowboys beat the Giants 40 to nothing. remember, in Week 1. Washington and Seattle. Seattle, they're up to minus 6. They open minus 5.5 at home. That total is pretty much holding steady at 44.5, so not much to talk about there. Then the Sunday Nighter, an ugly one. Jets Raiders, this game's down to a pick 'em. Jets were initially a favorite, but of course they lost Monday, so betters losing faith there. The total has dropped a point from 37.5 to 36.5. Monday night, 
Bills down to minus seven. Total holding steady at 46 and a half. Bills open minus eight and a half, by the way, against the Denver Broncos. I'll have more on that game momentarily. If there's any line move you're interested in, want me to talk about more, drop a comment down below. Give this show a thumbs up if you are so inclined. But we are moving now to sell high, and I think we're going to sell high on the Bengals this week, who are on a 4-0 straight up in ATS run, including back-to-back wins over the Bills and 49ers. This week, Cincy at home against the Houston Texans, like I mentioned, and laying 6.5 points. Injuries at the wide receiver position seem to be the story in this one. T. Higgins already ruled out for Cincinnati. Jamar Chase currently listed as questionable. As I mentioned in the market move section, we have seen money come in on the Texans already, down to plus 6.5 after they opened plus 8.5. Houston does have its own injury concern at the wide receiver position. Nico Collins missing practice. But this Texans team's 4-1 and one ATS as a dog this season, and C.J. Stroud is just dealing. What a game he had against Tampa Bay, rewriting the record books for rookie quarterbacks. Keep in mind, the Texans are two last-second field goals away from being on a six-game win streak themselves. As it stands, they're 4-2 and two straight up those last six games, both losses coming by just two points. The Bengals, yeah, they've been good of late, but they still have one of the league's worst yards per play differential and a negative year-to-date point differential. The Texans, they've got a plus-22 year-to-date point differential. They don't turn the ball over much. They've got a defense that can get to the quarterback, and I think they should be able to run the ball on a Bengals defense that's 30th in yards per carry allowed for what it's worth. Houston is 8-2 straight up and 7-3 and ATS the previous 10 meetings with Cincinnati, so I say sell high on the Bengals. Meanwhile, I'm staying by low on the Buffalo Bills Monday night. Told you I had more on this one a moment ago. At this point, the Bills would probably make a good teaser piece. They're down to minus 7, like I said, in the market moves section. Uh, against the Denver Broncos, despite five straight ATS losses, that's the first time for the Bills since 76, 1976. Those were the O.J. Simpson days, uh, less said the better there. Uh, Bills are the top five in my power ratings still. The Broncos, meanwhile, are in the bottom six. Uh, so I think the Bills should certainly be laying more than a TD here. I know they have defensive injuries and have, they struggled to beat the Giants and Bucks in previous primetime matchups. But this looks like a discount on Josh Allen and company this week, especially since the Broncos are averaging only 12 points in five primetime games with Russell Wilson as the starting quarterback. The Bills should look to run the ball here because the Broncos defense has given up the most rushing yards per game in the entire league. Stat of the week, got to talk about those unders. I just broke down the Monday night game. The total for Broncos Bills currently sits at 46 and a half. The total for Sunday night stinker between the Jets and Raiders, 36 and a half. As you undoubtedly know, primetime unders are now on a 9-0 run across Thursday, Sunday, and Monday night games. That's after Panthers-Bears stayed under last night. For the season, all primetime games are 23-7 to the under. That's more than 75%. And let's take it one step further. Since the start of last season, primetime unders are on a 63-29 run. But we're going to keep going for our stat of the week. If you've bet the under in every NFL game this season, congratulations. First of all, it's an incredible betting strategy. But if you've done it, your record would be 84-52-1. That's the best start for the under to any season since 1991. I was just 11 back then. Power play of the week. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Last week, I talked about the Packers' woes in the first half. Well, they came out and beat the Rams pretty convincingly, 20-3 as three-and-a-half-point favorites for just their third win of the season. But they still only scored seven points in the first half. For the season, Green Bay's averaging just four and a half points per game before halftime. This week's opponent, the Pittsburgh Steelers, who've been outgained in all eight games, by the way, they only averaged 6.9 points per game in the first half. Sounds like a first half under to me. Packers, Steelers, under 19. First half is your power play of the week. Now head on over to my page, wt.buzz backslash BP to get that $50 discount off a 30-day all-access pass. That applies to NFL, college football, any other sport. You can also take $50 off an all-access pass, all sports, if you so choose. Every day at wagertalk.com, I've got a ton of plays available, whether it's NFL, college football, NBA, college hoops, or soccer. Great time to jump on board. And that does it for the Power 5 for NFL Week 10. Check me out on X, formerly Twitter at Brian Power underscore wins, and make sure you are subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. College football version of the Power Five 
already available, so check that out if you already haven't done so. I'll see you again Monday on the Hustle Pod with Mark Zinno breaking down Monday Night Football. Until then, let's catch some tickets.